Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. When working in Anime Studio, you'll be using a lot of layers. Whenever, for instance, you draw an object, you'll be drawing that object on a vector layer. When you import an image, you'll have an image layer. If you import an audio file, you'll have an audio layer, and so on. Layers are very important to the structure of Anime Studio. In this tutorial, I'll be going over all the layer types you'll find in Anime Studio Pro. On top of that, I'll touch on the settings that you can adjust for each of the layer types. So, with all that said, let's get started. The first type of layer is the most common, and that is the vector layer. Whenever you draw something using one of the drawing tools in Anime Studio, you'll be drawing it on a vector layer. The important thing to remember about a vector layer is that it's very versatile. Unlike images that are pixel-based, vector layers are made up of curves and lines. And because of this, we can easily manipulate the drawings at any time. On top of that, they're low in file size, and they never degrade in quality. If you increase the size of a vector graphic or zoom into it, it will retain its quality unlike that of an image. So to demonstrate this, I can take my add point tool, click on a point and drag it around. And as you can see, I can easily manipulate this vector. So they're easy to make, they're high quality, and they keep file sizes low. The image layer is created whenever you import an image into Anime Studio. Images are more limited when compared to vector layers. You can move the entire image itself around, you can resize it, but you can't really do much more with it, unless of course you trace the image. But if you need images in your cartoon, each image will be made up of one image layer. The group layers in Anime Studio allow us to group objects together. So let's say you have a complex object that you are creating, but you want to make it into separate layers. You can add all of those layers into a group layer and then move them around with ease. Plus, this helps with organizing. So if I click in the drop down menu next to this group layer, you can see that I have two vector layers underneath. While I can individually move and alter these vector layers, if I click on the group layer and then take my transform tool, and just move the group layer around, you can see I am moving both vector layers at once. The bone layer is like a group layer in that you have sublayers underneath it. However, these sublayers are typically controlled by a bone structure, which is of course created with the bone layer. So if I take my manipulate bones tool and come over here to my character, you can see I can alter the sublayers with the bone layer. The switch layer is like a group and bone layer in where you can have sublayers underneath. The difference here is that only one sublayer is active at any given time. This can work great for, let's say, a mouth movement. The patch layer allows us to hide the line between two different objects. Let's say, for instance, we have an arm made up of two different layers. There may be a line that intersects between those two points. If I apply a patch to it, it can hide those points. So for instance, if I remove this patch, you can see that the line is there. If I bring it back, it hides the line. Particle layers are used to create unique effects like rain, smoke, and energy effects. They act like group layers, with the exception that each of the sublayers can be copied and randomized to create unique effects. So essentially, you'll have copies of the sublayers all animating at once. Audio layers are created whenever you import an audio file into Anime Studio. You'll see the audio file show up as a layer in your layers panel and also on your timeline. 3D layers are created whenever you bring in a 3D object. And as you can see here, I have a set of 3D stairs. The new text layer in Anime Studio is created whenever you lay down text. You can choose to either make the text a vector graphic, like before, 
or a text layer, which allows you to go back in and edit the text at any time. Finally, a note layer can be used to set a note down on the project file. This can be useful if you want to remind yourself to work on something, or if you want to leave a note for another animator. Now let's take a look at the layer settings. For this example, I am using a vector layer. At the top of the General tab, you have the ability to change the name of your layer. This is useful especially if you have a lot of layers. Labeling your layers so you can glance at your layers panel and determine which layer is which is very important. You can hide the layer in Editing View, which allows you to hide the layer from the canvas. Allowing animated layer effects can allow you to, let's say for instance, make the layer visible or invisible at any point on the timeline, or create fade effects with your opacity tool. So check this if you want a difference between keyframes with the compositing effects. You can choose not to render your layer if you wish, and you can choose a layer color so you can easily distinguish what it looks like on your layer's panel. Next is the compositing effects. You can make your layer visible or invisible. This might be useful if you need to take an object off screen for a while. You can make your layer look blurry with the blur radius effect. You can make it transparent with opacity. You can create a shading effect with the auto shading radius. You can flip your layer horizontally or vertically with the two checkboxes. And you can create an outline around all the objects in your layer with the outline setting. Finally below you have some more options. Rotate to follow path will rotate your layer if it's following a particular path. A good example of this would be if you have an arrow flying through the air and you want the top of the arrow to rotate towards the path. Scale compensation when checked on will make your layer lines thicker if you enlarge the layers or zoom into them. Deselecting this will keep the lines at their default weight. Rotate to face camera will always have the layer facing the camera no matter how you turn the camera. Immune to camera movements will keep the layer still even if you move the camera. Use HSV modifier image will change the way your images look when you import them into Anime Studio. Immune to depth of field will make your layer immune to depth of field if you have that option selected in your project settings. Finally, you can adjust the layer blending mode. So there's normal, there's multiply, screen, overlay, and so on. All of these will add different effects to your layers. So I recommend you play around with those if you're looking for a different effect. Coming up here to shadows, you can add layer shadows, like a drop shadow. You can automatically shade your layers. So if you want a shading effect inside your fill colors, you can do that. There's also a 3D shadow effect, which can create a perspective shadow. Motion blur when turned on will create a blur effect whenever your layer moves across a screen. And you can adjust the settings just to how extreme that motion blur will get if you wish. You have some vector settings here such as making noisy outlines or noisy fills. And you can even add extra noise to this if you wish. And there are 3D options. You can essentially convert your vector layer into a 3D object. So if you turn this on, you can choose between different options here, and you can adjust the edges, the shading, and so on. And when you apply this, and I get out of here, you can see now that my object is now 3D. Next are the layer settings for the image. All the settings remain mostly the same for the general tab, as well as shadows and motion blur. You have an image tab which allows you to identify the source image in case if you were to move or delete your original image. You can turn on tune settings if you want to give your image a different look. You can also adjust how the bones act with the image and so on. For your group layer settings, you have a masking tab which allows you to mask the group in a variety of different ways. You have a physics tab which allows you to enable physics and have the group objects react to gravity. And you can sort your group sublayers by depth if you wish. The bone layer has two tabs that are similar to the group layer, the masking and depth sort. And then you have the bones tab, which allows you to do flexible binding or region binding. And this will affect the way your bones act and interact with your sublayers. For your particle layers, you have a particles tab, 
From here, you can adjust the particle count. You can show how many particles you want to preview in your editing window and a bunch of different options. With an audio layer, you have the audio tab. From here, you can adjust the source audio, the audio level, spatial positioning, and if you are doing lip syncing, you can enter text below here of what the audio is saying so that Anime Studio can create a more accurate lip sync. For your 3D layers, you have 3D options that are similar to the 3D conversion I just showed you in the vector layer. But you can adjust the edges, the polygon orientation, shading, and other. And finally, with the text layer, there is a text tab now. So if you click on that, you have all the options to you just as when you created the text initially. And that covers your Anime Studio Pro layer options. If you have any more questions regarding Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I have more Anime Studio 9 tutorials out there, so stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.